Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Uh. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Uh. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Yeah. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECEO. And I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my dad walk on. Man, we done touched down, man. We over here in uh, Los Angeles, California. Yes, this sir. This is the third time being up here. Yes, sir. Man, but we got a jewel here today, man. We didn't get this guy. This guy right here, man, he don't need no introduction, man. You guys know him if you frequent the city and you watching for the R&B gurus. I ain't mm-hmm. giving them no R&B king. He locked up right now. Oh. <laughs> Check it, man. I'll take that. My boy Keith Stewart's in the building. What's up? What up? What up, y'all? It's your boy Keith Stewart. Thanks for having me here. Appreciate nah, that. Thank you for coming, man. No problem. Say, man, it's, it's just an honor and a pleasure, man, to be in the, uh, in this Los Angeles area, man, checking in with this boy Keith like this, man. Hey, man, uh, shout out. Is it Teresa? Yes. Yeah, Teresa she's the one that linked us with She's you, amazing. Man. She's amazing. How did you guys link? Uh, through social media. Really? Yeah, I was posting things, and she just saw me through social media. Her daughter's an artist, so Correct. Uh, I saw the way she moves. I'm like, okay, you want to help me? I'll take that, because I like the way you move. So, man, awesome. she was great. Yeah. Dope, dope. So, have you always wanted to be a singer growing up? Since I was a little kid. I've been singing, being goofy since I've been little. I yeah. Know, but yeah. to take it serious is something else, because in this um, game, it's it's hard. It's not easy. Yeah, but you got to love it. That's you how you love survive. It. I love it. Absolutely, I love it. So are you like every other R&B singer that starts out in the church first? Um, I grew, The funny thing is I grew up in church, but I never sang in the church until I got older. Really? Yeah, my whole family is gospel into church, so I would be a little kid watching them like, look at Granny, look at Auntie. And then like, now here I am singing. Why? So yeah. why didn't you start out singing in church? You just didn't want to sing or you didn't have confidence in your vocals at that time? I was because I could sing, but I was shy. It just being in public at that time at what a young age. What does that age. look like? I have confidence, but I was shy. What does that to look like? To display it. So it's like yeah. when you because if you have confidence, if somebody yeah. says sing, you gonna jump up in front of the yeah. crowd and be yeah. like, oh, I'm ready. Kill a nigga like me right. rock in the building. Right. And that's so, when it's on. Right. When I walk in that thing, I'm gonna be really judging you. Right. I'm judgmental, and I'm gonna be like, that nigga can't sing better than me. Oh shit! Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna say it like that, and okay, then I'm okay. gonna be like, "Nigga, what's up, nigga? What's and up then, then?" And then, yeah, like they used to do. Remember when Michael Jackson and them would do beat it or something? They didn't really fight, but they almost fight. Uh-huh. Right, like right. that type of a energy. dance off, but a sing off. There it is, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so what made you so shy? Like, 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 what made you confident but shy? What was that about? I think the confidence came in. I knew once I opened my voice, people were gonna love it. But just the fact of people staring at you at that point. I don't feel like I was ready for that stage then. Because now, you don't know give what it to me, give it to me, baby. Now I'm, I can take it now. But back then, I was a little kid. I wasn't, you know, I didn't know about that. So where did your vocals come from? Was your mom or dad, were they both singers? My grandmother. Your grandmother? She was like uh, one of the famous gospel singers called the Stewart Singers. She was singing with mm. Shirley Caesar, uh, wow. the Clark Sisters. She was singing with everybody. So What's I just, her name? Uh, Jesse Stewart, Mother Stewart. Wow, yep. that's awesome. Yeah. So you saw when she did all of that. I when you were seen a kid. it. She was just the, the man, the whole audience, command the whole audience with her voice, and I'm like, I want to do that one day, you know. So do you have any brothers or sisters? Yeah, I'm the youngest out of four. I got one older brother, two older sisters. Can any of them sing? No, but they, my sisters them started off singing, but they got too cool, too girly, too, too, you know. And they, yeah. I, just, I picked it up and stayed with it. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so. you, you were you raised with your mom and dad? Mom and my dad. They're still together. That's beautiful a parents. It's a blessing, major blessing these days. You yeah, know? yeah. That's you know? a, yeah, because there's so many people who sit in that same seat that you're sitting in, and they're raised by their moms. Their fathers was a Rolling Stone, or there was wasn't there, or was in prison, locked up. Right. So. Right. Did you okay? So you were born and raised where? In Compton, I'm born and raised from Compton. So seeing a lot of your friends, were they the same like you, or were they raised by single parents? Single parents. So did that make you feel special, or as a kid, you know, you don't really think about it. I didn't, I didn't think about that. When did you think about it? Because I know it had to cross your mind sooner or later. Not until I had kids. Oh, okay. Until I thought about like, whoa, this is really serious. Like mm-hmm. I don't know, people really got issues out here, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Are you together with the mom? No, I'm single. Anybody want to help me? <laughs> I need a, I need a, another. I need a woman in my life. 
You were about to say help. I need a baby mama. Now, I don't need no more baby mamas, but I need another woman in my life. <laughs> Man, I, I mean, yeah. you know, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I don't, I don't believe y'all. You on that Instagram? That DM is popping. You got your damn <laughs> yeah. shirt off. See, that's the problem. Yeah, nigga, you got the your problem. damn shirt off. <laughs> Yo, who you think he fooling? That's man. the problem. See, like, come on, man. I, we see what's going on. They don't want a guy like that. They keep thinking. Yeah, the that. good work. The good woman seeing that be like, oh no, he a playboy, right? And that's not even the case. But you know, it is what okay, it is. Okay, so appeal to that perfect woman who might be watching you right now. Tell them okay. why. Why? Okay, listen. And listen. who are you? And my, why should they choose okay, you? Okay, my name is Keith Stewart. Uh, Charles or oh, Keith Stewart? That means royalty, right? But um, I can cook. You know, I'm a good father. Uh, I'm a, I can sing. I can sing you to sleep, sing you to bed, sing your panties off. A lot. Okay, you know, here we go. Okay, that's what he That's yeah. what he come out with. He want to sing a panties sing off. Your okay. panties. I got to. You can't do that. You can't do it right. What? Yeah. Man, you know, what was the song that you, when you was, when, if I was uh, saying, man, I need you to audition uh -huh. uh, to be, uh, to make a meal ticket yeah, right okay. now, what would be the song that you would sing and how would you sing it? To show you The song? Is. Yeah. Give me a little bit of it. You ain't got to go long. Let's see. Let's see. Um, Say yes to this, cause this ain't so bad. Say yes to sex, even when we get mad. Say yes to kiss, one day we'll have. And say yes to love, and I'll say yes to that. Man, I like that, man. I like that. Say man. yes, baby. Can say, man, yes? that's dope, yeah. man. Thank so you. you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You gonna get in there then? That's that's what's gonna put <laughs> you in there, man. I think I think there's something about a person who can sing R and B in this day and time. You got some guys out here now that's you know they rapping and singing. You, I just interviewed T Rail. Mm -hmm. I just interviewed uh, uh, Derez Deshawn. Okay, like these guys are, are rapping, but they sing in a painful way and they mm -hmm. rap. But it's not R and B all the way. It's right. a different way that they. They do it. Are you trying to convert R and B into something else, or are you really trying to stay grounded in R and B? That's no, so I, I'm trying to convert it into something else. R and B obviously is my the soul and the heart of where I came from, but because I have this youthful energy to my life, uh, I feel like I'm transcending with each, each music change that goes on in the industry. Okay, like, the music is constantly changing, and I feel like I'm constantly with that flow of ideas and how the world is shifting. Do you Whoa. think you have to change it because R and B is dead? Whoa, whoa, no. dead! I'm just you know what? It ain't never died. You know, it ain't never died to me. It's just not exposed the way we need to expose it. So, you know, just like when Usher did that little thing, that little thing he was singing, and everybody going crazy now. It ain't never been dead. Folks just ain't putting it out there like they should be. Cause I see so many yeah. R and B um, artists changing it, not. Traditional R and B, they're changing it to more where they're pain music. I call it because right. they're singing with that pain, and it's not right. that love making R and B. Mm. Everything is about pain and suffering and all of that. Yeah. I still love it. I like what the new people are doing. Like a lot of people what before us, baby you making know, music. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm doing. Uh, that. You know, um, yeah. that that brings up a good point. You know, R. Kelly is is considered to be the king. Of, of r and B uh, now he's locked up uh, th there's room for uh, uh, people to step up to the plate you know uh, they locked him up because of we don't agree what with R Kelly did uh, but but the music can't be denied the talent with Michael Jackson and the right. talent with Ronald Isley and the talent with Charlie Wilson Man. you can't really take this guy out of the scenario in my eyes but what do you feel about it that's one of the main reasons why I do music uh, R Kelly. I'm sorry people might not like that, but uh, Lauren Hill, Michael Jackson, Lauren R. Kelly. Lauren Hill, dope. Like, he's one of the guys how I, how I make, do sing my backgrounds, how I, you know, I looked up to R. Kelly for the positive things he was doing in music. So I can't never take that away from him. The man worked hard. Yeah, yeah, he did work hard. Yeah. And, 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 and it's hard to, you know, people trying to separate the two, and it's hard to do. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Because of the way that this whole thing transpired. Right. So it's, it's like, dang, man, you know, uh, Ban his music. Cut it off. Don't play it. No. I'm telling you what people right. are, are saying. That you got those on that side, and then you got others who say we'll never stop listening. To right. Ron Kelly. Right. So you know it's a it's a it's a catch twenty two. It's right. just man, it's just so 
terrible the way you see a lot of the brothers once they once they do get to a certain level, right? Whether it be Bill Cosby and what he got caught up in. I'm not saying these guys are, or, or I'm not saying that they're, they're, whatever. I don't know the case. I don't right. watch it that close right. anyway. Right. But just the mere fact that seeing Bill Cosby as a a, a doctor when I was little, right. and, and seeing uh, what's that old girl name with him. Y'all know Felicia Rashad mm -hmm. and them. Right. Uh, uh, seeing her as a lawyer. You right. know, seeing them having a family and not divorcing, but staying together. You know, that stuff inspires people, man. Right. So you got to make sure you don't get lost in the sauce and not get the understanding that there is some good. One thing Paul said, and I'm going to get out of this. Paul said, every time I do good in the book, he say evil was present. Mm -hmm. You'll never have good without evil, man. Wow, that's deep. It's that's real. Deep. Yeah. So let me ask you, um, when did you start writing your own music? Um, you know what? I've been writing stuff since I've been, I would say, junior high school. Mm -hmm. But far as when it got on a serious level, my first placement, I say, with Marcus Houston. Mm. How did you get that? Uh, growing up in the church, they, we call him Bernie Mac. Okay. But his name is Marcus Hodge. He's like the music director for uh, Keisha Cole, Mark, uh, Marianne, a lot of people. So at the time he was working with uh, Marcus Houston, mm -hmm. and I got I did some records, and uh, I got a call with Nissan Stewart. I don't know if you guys know who Nissan Stewart mm -hmm. is, uh, and we did it at Universal Records. And I was how in, did you feel when you got that call? I, I felt I felt ready, but when I got there, it was my first experience. So I'm telling because he had sold millions of records already. So I'm like, hey man, you know you you doing my song, and he like. No, nah, you tell me what to do. I'm like, you want me to tell you? Wow. He was like, yeah. So then I was like, okay, I'm on now. Damn. Yeah. You know, you 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 brought up a, a, a what'd you say his name was again? Marcus Houston. Marcus Houston. Marcus Houston. Sister, Houston. Sister. Marcus Houston. Don't he got a brother named Omarion? <laughs> That's didn't Omarion's they, didn't brother. Didn't they do a, a, a R and B uh, something like that? Uh, uh, a versus the other night. Uh, just a, just a month ago. I'm, I mean, I'm just trying to. I mean, you know, it's just coming to me. And uh, I'm glad you brought that up. You know, I just want to know uh, what was up with that. I mean, it seemed kind of uh, weird to me. I yeah. mean, R and B is something that already is struggling out here to try to be yeah. seen and noted. Mm -hmm. But there was some things went on with some right. guys that night, like Ray J. It was some right. some things. Did that you see it? Me and my boy Mark Lamont talked about it. I didn't know. I didn't know about it until he told me. I, he said, he said, man, you know the verse is going on. I said, what? Now let me see. This nigga, I said, what? They got this going? They sound horrible. But, whoa. Who, they sound, wait a minute, bro. They sound horrible. Who? who it was entertaining. Was it both of that? them sound horrible or just one? Who see. sound horrible? Uh, no, you look over there at your <laughs> manager. <laughs> who sound horrible? <laughs> A lot of people. Like, it was some guys there that night. I know for a fact. I named, I name drop. They're the not about to use this interview on me. <laughs> One day they might need you. And they're like, oh, if he, he did that. I remember he said that. So, I mean, do you think that a lot of this stuff is fluffed up? Like, you just gave us an organic sound a while ago. But mm -hmm. there are so many machines and all type of ways to tune music up to where the voice is not even eloquent enough to to sing in that mm -hmm. tone or that or that on that level. But these guys are, are are living off of the music. Is this happening a lot, yes. or am I tripping? No, it's happening every day. People just Millie Vanilla should be right up here with everybody they, else. They should. Or no, oh, okay, but well, I'm gonna play. I'm I'm gonna say the other way. Maybe they're just having a bad day. That day the vocals are off. Ain't no bad days. They just choosing. <laughs> they they can't they can't really they they can't sing. So they so, find okay. other ways to get to the bag in music. Still, you got to give them cre like. That verses know, they bring it like quick credit. too. You can't really prepare like to try to get your machines right. You know what I'm saying? Right. That verse they like in two days they be like right. it's gonna be this week and you got to do it in two days. Y'all want to do it and they like damn. Let me damn. Do I got auto tune mic? Oh no, I can't do it. <laughs> so can I lip sync in this thing? Right. So Bring if you were boy. so if you were the manager um, there that day, what would you have done when you know they went on stage and you heard it? Sound? Would you be like oh, cut it? You coming off? What would you have done to help them? No, it was all for publicity. I mean, I feel like it was good. It was a lot of views. I feel like it, it went the way it was supposed to go. Okay. Like, I feel like it was part of what should have happened for them. Like, they didn't bring in Tank. They didn't bring in real singers like that besides Mario. So what did they expect to happen? 
Man, and yeah, you they think said Mario saved the day. Mario was decent. It, I mean, I'm gonna be real with you. Um, uh, you bring in a, a a guy like Kim, and something like that. It's a problem, man. Oh, Kim is a beast. You got some Kim. serious Ooh, singers, bro. Kim. You bring in Joe. You bring oh, in that's any one of, my of these guys. Singers. Any of these guys you bring in. Tell me what I gotta do. Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. So you do have some good singers out yeah. here, but boy, I hate that night was was so tragic for R and B. Right. Said tragic. <laughs> So like somebody died. Right <laughs> word, right? Somebody died. Like you definitely dismantled something. <laughs> For Mario. I'm sorry. Oh, man. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Shout out so, to Mario. Did you used to work with his brother? Shout out. No, no, I worked with Marcus Houston. That's his okay, that's cousin. His cousin, okay. Yeah. I thought that was his brother. That's no. how I got over in there. Yeah. I knew they had some yeah. kind of because they be together a lot. Yeah, they used to be cool, but now they They don't they not cool no more? Ah, no. oh, damn. Mm. I mean, you know, it's funny how that's something else. Like, you I wonder what caused it, though. Well, you know, uh, probably a woman, probably money, uh, money, all that. Usually that. Yeah. So, do you feel like, like, like when you think about uh, just where you came from, some of the relationships you built, okay, uh, um, over the years? Okay. Um, this is a good subject because I've been going through this personally. Sometimes people leave. Sometimes okay. people stay. Okay. Uh, have those things happen in your career where some people that you used to deal with may not be there anymore for you? Yeah, it's a part of the journey. That happens yeah. all the time. Like, you know, it has highs and lows. Some people around for the right right reasons, wrong reasons, but in time, you're going to always figure it out. Like, why people are, are really around you. Wow. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, so, um, but okay, so you said you dealt with Marcus Houston. I know yeah. that opened you the door for a lot of other artists yeah, to, you know, course. request your services. Yeah. So yeah. who came next after Marcus Houston, and how did that happen? Um, Jamie Foxx was right after uh, Marcus Houston. How did you get that hookup? That was crazy. Because that's huge. Okay, so was Which that before? Jamie Foxx? Y'all about to say, was that, that actor, before? Jamie Foxx, the actor. No, 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 I'm talking about no, the no, Jamie. No, no. You, that was phases of was Jamie Foxx. Was that before was Ray this? or after uh -uh. Ray? Oh, yeah, or, let me say it like this. Don't answer that yet. Okay. Uh, was that before uh, Kanye West or after Kanye West? This was. You see what I'm saying? There's a there was difference. This was actor? after Kanye. This was after Kanye okay. West. I, that's a bad okay. boy. He stayed, he, he, the house in Hidden Valley because he had two other places. So the house that he's still at now, this is then. Okay, okay. He, he's a bad. That's a he a bad boy at that point. Yeah. Now yeah. he the old Jamie on the show. He was just clowning and singing. Not and clowning. that Jamie. Not that at this Jamie point, Fox. he got in the full estate. He has <laughs> a state go. with and ranches already, and horses everywhere in his backyard. He, he, he had already <laughs> did that that drink. I'm going to buy you a drink. That drink song. Was that him and T-Pain? I, 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 mm -hmm. I, I think it's that one. That one. Alcohol. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Not the, the, yeah he that had was did him. that one. That was him and T-Pain did that, right? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. But that, so he had done that he already. He had done that one. And then you came in. And then I came after that. And what song did you write? Oh, the, the song that I wrote for him? Yeah. It's called Translation. So he hasn't put that out. No, yet? he hasn't because it was supposed to be for his artist Marcus Anthony. That he Jamie wasn't even supposed to be on the song. Like I went there to go work just with Marcus Anthony, which he lives with Jamie at his house. He's his okay. background singer, so he's in. The, we in there working, and Jamie like, what's this? Who's that? And then he come in there and put a verse on there. I'm like, what the heck? But they never put the song out. That's how they acting a damn fool. I know that? what they doing over there. I know Jamie like a book. I yeah. can tell. I'm a clown, so I know clowns when I yeah. see him. He be cutting up. He's yeah. so talented, he just going to do something any damn yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. It was that kind of vibe. <laughs> I know it. And then we ate with a chef after. It was a good vibe. Oh, man. How, long, how long ago was that? This is maybe like five years ago. Wow. Yeah, so it's been a minute. Man, don't been a you minute. hate that when you do work and they hold on to it, don't drop it? Yeah, yeah, no. but it's, it's part of it, but you yeah, know. I'm gonna tell you I something. If I wish I had that on them. I wish I'd have been over there that day. Sometimes it's just about the memory. It's about the pride, mm -hmm. about going through it because ain't many people can say what you I just know, said. I know, I know, and I think about that all the that's time. That's the part that's dope. Uh, yeah. So that that other part they talking about, they didn't put it out. I don't care if yeah, they put I it really out. Care. Yeah. I just want to be over there doing right. my thing and Jamie walking around. I just interviewed Mac down in New Orleans, and Mac was saying something that was so dope. I, I was like, he's like, man, yeah, I went on Scarface and them. Uh, you you know they got a pro podcast too, and he was like, yeah, I got to rock out with Face. I was like, damn, you got to rock out with Face. He said, yeah. I said, man, y'all, did you record it? He said, no. Nah. He said, I, he said, I played, he was playing, I think, so that was the for guitar, him. and he was playing, they both were playing it together. And I think it was the fact that he got to do it. It mm -hmm. wasn't for the public. Right. It was for him. Right. 
and I thought that was dope because you right. know you're talking about a guy that did 21 years in prison right. mm -hmm. come home and everybody's interviewing him Beehive all these yeah. people interviewing him and he gets Scarface and the only thing he yeah. wants from Scarface which he's a big fan of Scarface is to rock out with wow him. you see what I'm saying wow. so that's what I'm thinking about when right. you're saying what you say. well I feel my shit I feel my I feel my I had to get mine. You got it. I had to get it. I had to. It was too big the state. I had to get it. So you got it. I got it. I had to. Can I have it? Let me put that out there. Yeah, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Nigga be talking. Yeah, let me put that out there. Just send it to me. Right. And when that part comes on. See, then I'm not invited. No, because I don't think he's gonna, gonna let you put it out. I don't think he's gonna yeah, want that out there. What the hell fun is it to have it and can't use just it? Just to you show my that? kids and show my son, like you know what, Daddy, be, you know I was here, <laughs> you know. So let me. Ask, so have you been to any one of the Jamie's parties? Because I heard his parties are historical. Never. Uh, that's the crazy part. I never been to none of his parties. Mm. I just always want to go and work with him and just develop that kind of relationship, you know. So I would Man. love to though. Yeah. I hear they crazy. Yeah, yeah. I heard they're crazy. I've had so many what well, females. It's the females. And men, right? men on there. Which one? I know the females. Um, Faison, damn show. Faison said Faison that it was said crazy. He had a crazy party. Who um, else? Somebody. Yeah. It was another male. I can't remember who it was. I yes. thought it was a female. Oh my God! What's his name? I can't remember right now, but it was a male. Bunch of them been over here talking about Jamie Party, and he ain't invited me to no party. <laughs> Man, it got to the point where I was going to his house so much that I would go and just tell the security my name. He had two gates, like one gate, he has like a long driveway, and then another gate, you got to say another code again. I just tell him my name, and they'd be like, oh, Keith's here. It let yeah, me right what up happened? No, you you messed I up. I stopped. No, I didn't. I just stopped going. You got tired. I of stopped it. going. I like, did like, get tired of it. Where the hell am I, I gonna did. get my shot, I, man? That's exactly what they I was thinking. They just using me. You know what? I'm gonna say this, what and I don't fuck? care. That's no, exactly I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> because I'm gonna tell you what these folks do, and they do this all the time. Shout out to uh, yeah, I'm gonna say a nigga uh, 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 Wycliff. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to. Uh, uh, what's the boy, boy brother? The, the brother, his brother named something Wonder. I don't know. Jerry Wonder. Oh, Jerry Wonder. Yeah. Uh, shout out to these guys who they they've had a moment, but they bring a young buck in so that they can get that energy feel. I already know that, man. <laughs> I know that. I know this. I know this. I know this. <laughs> so this, frequencies. This, this is this yeah, is so what they, can they start that so they can feel up. just feel that feeling fire. again because they know that feeling is something right. they're trying to right. get back to. Is and I never smoke crack, but it'd be like, oh, but drinking or oh, the first time you have sex, it's a place where you're trying to get back to that you can't get back to. You can't. So you say, you know what? Let me let me just get around somebody who hadn't made it but hungry like I was at that yeah. time. And if I can get around it, yeah, then I feel it. It's in the room. It's kind of like uh, Saul. Saul did that with, with David in the Bible. I always go to the Bible with stuff. He no, just wanted it. to be it. around I him. I love it. He just wanted to be around him so he could be close to him. So that he, when he got close to him, he felt better because he was sickly. Mm. When David would come around because he had the anointing on him, okay. he felt good because he played a harp. He played an okay. instrument. And it made him feel good because God had anointed David as king and Saul was being moved out the way. Wow. I'm being real. So wow. this is the, that, that, that thing that that they trying to get to, uh -huh. they want it back. Wow, wow, that's deep. No, you're oh, you're right on the money with that. He said the Royals before I even said it. I feel you. I'm not out of here. Yeah, no, that's the truth. Yeah. So I want to go back to you said you're from Compton. Yes. When I think about Compton, you Bompton. think about let me let me correct you. That's one of my videos. I yeah. see it's called Bompton. It's Bompton. You right. think about you know the job. gangs, the violence, the hood, all of that. So is Compton Bompton? The way how everybody perceives it. Hell today. yeah, it was. The way that's how I grew up, but it's not like that no more. He's I can't pause. really say. You, you got, you got, you got you areas. Done, oh, you done grew up. You not in it like you was. I'm Them not, young niggas still over right, there. Right, 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 right. That's yeah. You know what? <laughs> I, my my workout routine. I go to Compton like every other day just to work out because I grew up there. So I jog around the city mm -hmm. like places people would think like, man, what the hell is he doing there? But I still work out there. So. Really? Yeah. So is it like, like shout out to Atola Marv, shout out to Compton Menace, shout out to them boys, man. Uh, okay. But um, just, is it, shout out to Kendrick Lamar. Right. Yeah, right. shout out, I'm shouting out, man. Right. It's some, them boys over there. Yeah, they shout come out to them. them, all of them. Yeah, you yeah. know, but the thing is, do you, do you feel like coming up, was there pressure to be in a gang? Or just explain nah. to me what, what, what it was like coming up in Compton, when it comes to gang and gang related issues, trying to go to school. So my dad, my dad was a really respected like gang banger. So me and my brother, we didn't grow up like that because he already put us on the game. He just taught us how to fight. So a lot of gang bangers 
and I'm an R&B guy would be trying to test and I'm singing but they'd be like man he don't, you don't talk like you bang you don't talk so they'd test but because my dad was really out there he taught us and I'd be bing back boom bop beating up gang bangers this big six eight six like the stories and then so I was like bro like I'm in a path where I'm gonna be on a stage I don't want to be having no enemies or doing that because yeah. I don't gang bang yeah. I don't have no alliance no no I can call hey blood that's blah 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 that car cuz I don't have that I'm just trying to do right but I'm crossing paths because I live here so I was like let me just stay away from this and focus on music that's dope. No, you. Yeah. I mean, it sounds cheesy. Yeah. Because it sounded like you was scared to be in the hood, but you wasn't. You really just I was didn't beat them up in there. I was oh, beating them up. No, I was the one that was beating them up. I tried to throw him under the bus. He wouldn't get nah. under there. You're, nah. you're like, no, nah, nigga, I was beating them. I'm the one that's beating them up. But mm. but but it feel good to to make it out. What are you doing to try to give back to the youngsters that's there now, being that you're trying to put? Because I believe that if a man get an opportunity to be something special, mm -hmm. he always has to have some type of give back to the youth. Or, or give back to the community. What do you do to try to give back? Um, my my most precious gift to me, to the youth, is knowledge. Like, I try to share knowledge because we waste so much time making uh, decisions that we shouldn't make. So I try to inspire people and say, hey, man, if you got a dream, go after your dream. Don't let nobody discourage you. Because uh, if you want to settle down, you can settle down later. Mm -hmm. But right now is the most time you should take risks at this young age. Take like risk it. and experience and, and get knowledge on whatever you're trying to achieve. Get the knowledge on whatever field you're trying to do. Wow. That's what I tell them. I well, like that. Yeah. What I wanted to go to, into, after Jamie Foxx, who else did you work with? Or who else, you know, acquired your service? I remember uh, something about Chris Brown. Yeah, that was a crazy, that was the big, that, tell me about I'm not going to say that was the biggest, but that was so crazy yeah, working with Jamie Chris Brown. Yeah, because Jamie Big, okay. Yeah. But Chris Brown is like the UFO iconic artist of our time right now right. so he's like the Michael Jackson of our time right now so did he reach out to you or did well, yeah that, so so um I had wrote the song for this TV show called Hell Date okay. on this on BET I don't mm. know if you heard yeah, of that song I heard of that. so uh when I did that this lady um Deidre Graham she was over at Def Jam with Kevin Laos yeah you mm -hmm. know she Kevin is Lowe, yeah. so so I went to New York <laughs> Me with Kevin Lyles, he jumping on the jumping on the couch throwing peanuts because because it was out of me and Trey songs like when Trey songs still had the braids right mm -hmm. before he cut his shit. Remember when he did the mm -hmm. and then so he had one girl in there talking about hey who do you who do you want Keith Stewart or Trey songs? She came in, I'm looking good, so she like. I can't choose. Like, why you want me to do that in front of him? So she never chose. And then he started turning up Trey songs, throwing peanuts everywhere, jumping on the I'm like, man, he this he been extra cause Trey shows his artist. Yeah, so that's right. The, it didn't work out. But DJ Graham was like, man, Keith, I know you the shit, you tight. So so one day I had all these songs that I was writing. And she was best friends with Tina Davis. Okay. That, that was uh, Chris Brown's manager. She the one put him out the first time, and they went to college together. So now I'm at home, my baby mom at the time. I'm taking a shower, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I get my phone ring. She's like, "Your phone keep ringing." I'm, I'm like, get, "Get my phone." So I get the phone. It's Deidre, and, but her boyfriend name is Chris, and which is her business partner. So she's like, "Hey, Chris wants to meet you at the studio." And I'm like, why is she telling me Chris woman? She's like, I'm with Chris Brown right now. I said, what the? Because I knew she really knew him. Because she picked him up from therapy. I mean, from his therapy to take him to the studio. She was the one that was picking Chris, just them two. So she in the car, they talking about therapy stuff. And she's my music is playing in the back. So he's like, hey, no, 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 no. What's that? What's that? She like, she tried not to be one of them ones like, hey, I got me, I got, cause they have a real relationship. But he like, nah, nah, can you turn that up? What is that? She like, oh, that's one of my artists, Keith Stewart, my songwriters. Can he come to the studio right now? I'm like, so she's like, I go to the studio, this dude in the studio singing the lyrics to my song. I said, hi, he just, how you know the lyrics that fast? Like yeah, that nigga want that song. I said, how you know the lyrics? And then he it's girls in there, Rockstar, which is a big producer. And then he's like, hey everybody, this is Keith Stewart. He wrote two songs. So I said, two. I said, he didn't pick two of them out. <laughs> he, I, so so we right there. He like load to you load the uh, file up, load the file up. Uh, you got the files? I'm like, yeah. Here you go. See, they loading the files up. Then Sean Kingson, bitch ass. I'm sorry. He come in there. 
I'm sorry. I'm, 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 so, I'm sorry. He come in there. Yeah, yeah, get in I'm there. Sorry. Get in there. Get I'm in sorry. there. Yeah, I'm like sorry. That. Because he, what I did met, he do? He came in there with a big gang of weed up in there with this dude named Sam Hook who wrote the stuff for Trey Songs. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so, so I'm sitting up in there because I'm trying to be respectful because Deidre is the one that brought me. Yeah. And I'm trying to be good business. Yeah. Let's talk about it. So, so now they come in there and now they going through tracks. And I'm just sitting in the corner. He pushed your stuff yeah, out of the way. Yeah, I'm sitting in the corner <laughs> like this. You done already tried to get in there. This man playing. I'm sitting there. I'm like, man, we ain't going to record that. She like, no, man, man. Next thing you know, I'm out the thing. But my files was in the thing. And next thing you know, he goes to jail from whatever he had did. Yeah. And then, so I'm thinking, because they saying my song was going to be a single. Next thing you know, he got the royalty album. The song is not even on there. Mm. So then following summer, which was a few months after, my boy called me, hey, they put the song out. I said, nobody didn't call me and tell me nothing. What you mean? But I'm excited because I'm like, hey, Chris Brown put the song out. I got my, my. What song was it? It's called Pussy. <laughs> he put the song he out. He put it out. And, 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 I need to go and, look it up. And wow. it was on a mixtape, though. But I said he still put it out. Put I got my out. credit. But he put it out. And I was excited. Like, dang, but he didn't even tell me. He didn't want to, he didn't, he, but you got to realize. Things. Is that it? Oh, oh yeah. He's telling me who else I wrote for too. I forgot. Yeah. I uh, wrote for, you wrote for so many people yeah. you forgot. Uh, B BBD, they like an iconic group. What? I wrote for them. For real? Yeah, I did two songs with them too. When was that? Because they, they ain't did nothing lately. They, they, when the no, hell was that? You can look it up. They, 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 they still working? They and it's still a song working. out. Huh? Is yeah, a song it's out? It's out. It's What's out. it called? It's called Operator. Okay. Yeah. BBD. Sing it, sing it, let me hear a little bit. Operator, help me get my baby back. Cause I never meant to hurt her. And I just can't give up on us. It's like that. Really? Yeah. And you basically, who, who, who sung that part? Ricky? Uh, 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 Ricky is the dark skinned yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's and, who would have been. Uh, Michael Bivens wasn't there. It was yeah, only Mike, the, the, Mike don't sing like that. He rap. What's the rap? No, it was the, what's the light skinned Ronnie. one? Ronnie. The tall one? Ronnie. Yeah, he, it was only them two there. Ricky and Ronnie was okay. only people there. But that's dope, man. You, yeah. you got to sit with him and talk with him. Bro, I, the same thing that happened with Marcus Houston, I'm going there because I'm like, man, that's, this is this. They tell me, no, you tell me. They telling me to tell them what to do, how to sing it. So because your vision, yeah, but that's dope, but man. How yeah. long does it take you to write a song? Like somebody Five call minutes. you. Five minutes. Where do you get inspiration for, from? Because okay, does it depend on who you're writing it for? No. Is what you write, or you just write? Yeah, a song? No, no, no. Actually, yeah. So, so if I get a beat, I'm just gonna go off the top of energy. But if I get an artist, I'm gonna ask questions and what's their story, so I can okay. make them feel it. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Man, um, just uh, give me the top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Any genre. Any genre. It don't matter to me what. They could be rock and roll stars. Okay. Okay. Number one. Okay. Who is your number one artist of all time? Dead or alive. Michael Jackson. Number two. Number two. Whitney Houston. Number, number three. three. R. Kelly. Man. Yeah. I, but... <laughs> That boy say Michael Jackson. Now who you, you you work with Chris Brown? Is Chris Brown better than Michael Jackson? No. It's a Why? rumor going around that people saying that he might be better than Michael Jackson for his 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 artistic flow. I mean his his singing, his flipping in the air in one spot. Uh, that they 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 kind of count Mike out on this. What's up with that? No, it's like the like explaining Omarion. I mean and Usher. It's like, okay, of course, Omarion is technical, can dan dance more, but when Usher is overall going to give you that show, that, that, that experience, Usher is going to make you feel like that. And even though Chris Brown is UFO and doing all these flips and all that, Michael Jackson's mind is so creative and his team was so creative, he's just going to give you an unbelievable experience you can't even top. Yeah, I I always argue the point that he, I wish Michael Jackson because it was the you know he went through so many phases and mm. stayed his star power stayed so long. long. It's hard to go back now when you Chris and you nineteen or sixteen or seventeen and you you doing your thing. What about when Mike was five and That's six what singing I'm with you can't Mike, you know Smokey Robinson right. and all that man? You can't really gauge it. You it's hard. It's, to, it's not even close. That right? Yeah. So if you're talking about that, who would you say would be better between Usher and Chris Brown? Chris Brown. Whoa. That's a hard one there. Why? Uh, that's hard. Because, yeah. because. You, you agree with that? <laughs> I, for, for me. You don't it, agree with that. Dude. You can't do it. It's, it's, it's hard, better, man. Better is what you depend on better. Are you talking about vocals? Or are you talking about before, whole overall? Chris Brown. Why? Because he's, he's overall can do 
different things and Usher can't. Like what? Like he can do pop. He can go and do this country song or he could do and it makes sense and it doesn't seem like it's forced. Like Chris Brown, when he does things, it seems like it's just natural. Sometimes Usher, we see like, brother, don't do that move. Or we'll see something like, oh, don't do that, man. But I've never seen something Chris Brown's doing. I'm like, oh, bro, don't do that. It always seems organic and just flowing to me as an artist. I don't, I don't know, know about that. I, I, it's, man, man, my boy Usher had a powerful move. They, he said they that. did a versus. He said, if they did a don't versus. Do it. <laughs> if they did a versus, who wins? Okay, if they do a versus, <laughs> Usher's winning. Song. If they do a Usher, uh, they do a versus, Usher's winning. But 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 uh, you ask me my opinion. That's because you work with him. No, you no, 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 no. Because <laughs> right. from what I want to see, what I want to see is I would I would rather watch Chris Brown dancing because I think it's cooler. I think he uses futuristic type of things. Like he he's, his mind is always changing. It's not like one thing. Like you never know what to expect with him. But what Usher is, it's going to be sexy. It's going to be just good vocals. It's going to be safe. And so for me, I like the risk. So who you, who you, okay, who, so that Confessions album, what, what Chris got did ever top that Confessions album? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that superstar went hard on that thing, didn't it? That's the best, like that album is. <laughs> it's hard to deal with Usher, you going 20 man. songs, you ain't going, who going to beat them? It's hard. Nobody ain't going to beat It's going to be hard to beat Usher with that. It's, I, I always tell people, I, they always say Chris Brown is the man, he the best. But then when I put that question, I did the same thing happened with you just done. Mm -hmm. Whoa, 20 songs? Huh. Well, yeah. <laughs> the That's one gonna album. It's going to be coming, man. If we I mean, talking it's going to be albums, coming, man. Chris, if we talking about more albums and more, like, but we just don't know. solid 20, Usher going to get him because. That's crazy. Yeah. Man, I, I definitely appreciate you for coming on the show. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to rock out? With um, you? you can always find me. Every social media tag is Keith25Music. Uh, Keith25Music, every social tag, Keith25Music, K-E-I-T-H, 25Music. Man. That's where you find me. Man, well, I appreciate you for coming on the show today, man. Thank you. We out here embracing us in L.A. like this, man. Man, thanks for having me. This man. is amazing. The setup is dope. Man, we come we in like this. That's how, we, that's how we come in, man. man. Just like this, man. I love it. I love <laughs> Thank it. Thank you so much, man. Thank God you. bless you. Peace God and love, my too. brother. We Thank you. It. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And Woo. we out.